Normally what happens, what our experience has been is that uh, uh, we are part of the student group for Insight and I am one of the members of Insight and uh, uh, we work in different campuses across the country and trying to bring these cases of class discrimination out in open. Besides this case and this documentary which is a small part of that, uh, that campaign uh, uh, because unfortunately we have to use these cases because these cases are, are only proof that class discrimination exists. You know, you might have heard in the documentary where the Justice Sister is saying that we don't have proof. You know, normally uh, uh, we, we accuse of class discrimination but we are not able to prove. And, uh, and so these dead bodies are our only proof actually. So, uh, suicide in the campuses is not being studied or not being you know, taken up by uh, student community or faculties. Suicide is a major problem and especially in not only suicides by the rich and the students, suicides in general uh, among, the, uh, among the student community, especially in sciences, is one of the major problems in this country. And unfortunately the academia, the campuses are not willing to deal with this. And the only response what they do is that they start yoga classes. In JNU, something happens, you go to yoga class. Or they will have a counselor and like in IIT Delhi. And and uh, you know and 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 if the student is not performing, the professor says, I know you will commit suicide, go and meet the counselor. So this is the attitude where and this, this, and not only about, uh, you know, it's, it's not about the Dalit and Adivasi students are harassed like this. Many cases during our campaign, we came, we came across that students coming from big, big background and women, they have, and especially in sciences, in professional colleges, this is the attitude of the faculty members. And with Dalit and Adivasi students, it becomes worse. in the class itself about caste about you know of about harassing dalit students openly in the class the worst part is when the student approaches the counselor the counselor herself a woman counselor uh, she was a woman taken so normally and so casually and not suicide rates in these uh, institutes are so high. In IIT Kanpur where we did a study, there were in uh, this study we did in 2010, in three years there were nine suicides. Out of nine suicides, seven were scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. And there was one woman uh, among nine, upper caste woman and there was one other guy. Uh, OBC I guess. So we asked that, we said that see we are not accusing you of any discrimination. We went to the administration, we said that we are not accusing you of any discrimination. We are just uh, want to know why an, in an institute these suicides are happening. Forget about their caste or gender. You know students committing suicide is a major, major, major issue. What, what, what you have been able, you know, what, what uh, what uh, remedies you have taken you know? and they openly said you know very open to us they said that these were weak students who could not cope up with the rigorous academic environment we had and without any remorse without any guilt with very plainly they said you know and so what we did was we took out all those nine students and their uh, uh, academic background and we were able to get some six, six I guess, six uh, students, uh, those academic uh, qualification, and all of them were toppers. Twelfth class, eighty percent, ninety percent, ninety-five percent. So 
Our question was, what happens with these students once they join these institutes? What happens with the Dalit student or Adivasi student who is 80 percenter or 85 percenter and suddenly he starts failing? Suddenly he starts failing in not one, in almost every subject. What actually happens? Is there some problem? And if, if this is a recurring phenomenon, if this is happening continuously, ha do you think that institutes have some kind of responsibility towards it? You know, where this, the, the, you know, we are also citizen of this country and we have equal right to, to the public institutions. So, does an institute which is like 50 years old now and which, which, which gets a huge chunk of public money and who, which, uh, you know, is class 10 plus 2 grammar, English grammar, which the student is aware of. What a student is not aware of is the language of science, the, the terms which are used in sciences. They come from regional backgrounds, they know English, but what they don't know is that suddenly, you know, you, you come from a regional uh, language background and suddenly you have to study in English. Right, and it's a huge problem. It's a, it's a problem. I, I, any student who 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 have experienced this will understand. You know, suddenly if you are a Kannada medium student or a Telugu medium student, and suddenly you come to IIT and you have to start uh, your you know everything is in English, and there is no orientation. You know, there is no orientation programs. They, they, and only these remedial classes are there, and in this in IIT Delhi in. In one semester, these, these remedial classes are for first semester students. They held only 12 classes. So in one semester, 12 classes, and they think that these students will be able to compete with the students who have 14 years of English medium schooling. So, so this, this is how it works. So on papers, they have remedial classes, they have everything, but it is not going to work. You know it very well, that 12 classes of English grammar will not going to help the students. So there has to be something, there has to be language labs. And now if you, if you go to you know, these, these uh, uh, foreign languages departments, there are language labs are there, high tech labs are there. They, they, they have all the mechanism to teach students, but they are not interested because it also gives them a proof of the Dalit's non-merit. So a Dalit student or Adivasi student coming from regional language background, can be proved very easily non-meritorious, as non-worthy, as someone who is not, non, not worthy of becoming a doctor and engineer. So if I ask a question in English and you will not be able to respond, it's very easy for me to actually say that you don't belong here. And because of you only our, our, you know, our excellence is going down and uh, uh, all that, all that thing they say and uh, during practicals, as if you have seen in both the documentaries which we made, one was on Jaspreet Singh and another on uh, Bal Mukim, they were continuously being failed in practicals. And in, during Viva, what they do is, okay, what, is your, what was your rank? So if, even rank during so you see that, that that humiliation, that continuous, you know, they will they will they will they will tell you that you don't belong, or you have come through quota, or you have taken reservation, and that is why. Here. So this 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 humiliation, this is what actually kills our students. This is what this humiliation, and this and this is a very constant process. This is a process in the classroom, it is in the mass, it is in the you know hostels. Every day our students are being reminded of of being non-worthy of these colleges, 
of that they are not welcome here, that they don't deserve to be here. And they are not given any chance to, and, and plus there are economic problems. So in Senthil's case, you might be knowing in 2008, Senthil uh, Kumar, PhD student from Hyderabad who committed suicide. Actually, we built our campaign after knowing about Senthil only. We were as a student, I was a student of engineering college and then I came to JNU for my MA and MPhil and so we were aware, we were aware that these suicides were happening. We knew that, but we didn't know how to approach these cases because it's very difficult to prove, you know, because and suicide, suicide is also a very complex phenomena. Suicide, the, the student when, you know, a, a depression, depression is not about, only about one, one factor. There are multiple factors and there are something, you know, something triggers and then you, then the person commits suicide. And so it's, it was very difficult actually. Uh, but then we decided when, uh, you know, uh, uh, this Bal Mukun's family in 2010, uh, this, uh, this boy committed suicide. And they were the first family which I came to know, which was vocal, saying that this is a caste discrimination case. And most of the families, they, they were not, they didn't know actually. Most of us don't tell our parents what is happening because our parents live in villages, small towns, and either they are semi-literate or, you know, and, and, and we think that they don't, they will not be able to understand. So in most of the cases, what, what, what we came across was that our students were not even communicating their problems to the family. This was the only case where the student was constantly communicating. He was in touch with his sister, he was in touch with his uncle, uncle visited him just one month prior to suicide and he was in touch with family members, so that, 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 that is the reason that they were able to come out. And uh, when we came to know about this case, uh, we went to uh, the, uh, their village. And we have been working on this area of uh, this discrimination, but we had no proofs. We didn't know what to do. We had long list of suicide. These are only 18 cases, just three years cases which we compiled. But we had a long list, right from 1991. Uh, but we didn't know how to, you know, how to put this up. Because the moment we put this suicide cases, immediately the response will be, see, this is what will happen if you will give reservation. Because these students are not able to cope up, so they commit suicide. So this, this counter narrative was always in our mind that the moment if we talk about suicide, immediately this thing will come up. That this will become another proof of our, non, our being non-meritorious. So then finally we were able to go, you know, visit the village, and uh, we didn't went, we didn't go to document this case. We just wanted to meet the uh, father and the mother because they were very vocal and we have seen the news clips. So we just went and uh, and then they started speaking. And luckily one of my friend has that still camera, digital camera, uh, where you can take clips for five minutes and then you have to, you know, five, five minutes you can take video clips. So luckily we have and, we st and the friend started recording it. And we didn't go with the intention of, you know, recording it. We just went to meet, uh, to know what, what actually was happening. And uh, so the parents started speaking and then we, when we came back and we saw the footage and uh, we said that, we, then we thought that we should do something about it. It is such, so important that this, this story should come out. So then we, we, you know, we uh, did the editing and little bit and then we, uh, you know, came out with this and then we came out with two more documentaries. So now we, we, are, we are having three, three documentaries. So the good thing about this uh, campaign was that, you know, we have this belief that caste only exists in UP and Bihar or caste exists in rural areas. Caste is not there in urban areas. Caste is definitely not there in higher education. So, the, so whenever we used to speak on caste, this was, you know, the first statement which you, that you guys are playing politics here, you know. Uh, uh, you are bringing caste here. Actually, reservation 
brings the cost. Otherwise, these spaces are very cool spaces and very cost-free spaces. And you guys are doing politics. You guys bring cost here. And because of reservation, cost comes. So all these things were there. So what these documentaries have done for us is that it has given us you know, a little bit of space to talk about caste discrimination in higher education. You know, the, and I can narrate stories after stories. You know, my own stories, my parents and my friends. You know, in my own family, I'm the third one who was not able to complete his engineering. So I can tell you lots of stories of how, but these were stories. We don't have proofs, right? And it is very easy once I'm struggling in my campus, I'm not able to, you know, I'm being humiliated daily and I'm not able to concentrate. It's very easy to prove that I'm a failure, right? And once you are, once you, once in your exam, uh, exam seats, it is written that you failed, then there are no arguments for you left actually. Because they can very easily say that you failed. We didn't discriminate. But nobody tells the story about how we get failed. You know, how 80% 85% you know, the person who gets college and all these students who committed suicides were toppers, by the way. Each and every 18 cases which we have documented were toppers in their fields, in the schools. They were not your average Dalit student, which you know, a stereotype is there that they come with 33% marks and because of reservation, Ajay Shri Chandra, who was from Andhra and uh, uh, nearby only, we had made a documentary, now we are going to release it, was the topper of uh, uh, Nijam Science, there is some Nijam Science College, no? Here. He scored in BSc 87% marks and he was a topper. He goes to IISC for his MTech and he commits suicide within six months and he leaves the diary where few pages were torn by the police, which were, the torn pages were mostly in English, but the, some Telugu papers were left. Maybe the police would not have been able to read it. So they returned the diary to the, uh, to the father, and uh, there it was written that these eyes, you know, they scare me. They look at me with such inferiority. Uh, with such superiority complex. So, so these things, he has not clearly written, he has not clearly written. Because to be clear, he has to be clear, no. One, once you go into depression, things become very hazy, you know. And uh, so this boy was topper and he commits suicide. He was not given a lab. Uh, he was not, uh, you know, everyone gets a lab once you get admission. He was, he was denied lab. I think he was in second year, I guess. And I doing practicals, he was left stranded. So he, he, all these, you know, these are the things which we know. But many things would have gone. And this guy commits suicide. And after that, the institution comes up with a theory that this guy committed suicide because of the domestic problems. So they pinned all the fault on his father, who was a single parent. So they said that because his father was a single parent, so he committed suicide. So these are the things which, uh, this is how it is done. So what we are trying to do is to, to bring out these stories. And we are not saying that, take this as truth. I'm not here to convince that these are the true stories. These are one, one, one side of version. I'm not saying that this is the truth. What I'm trying to say is that there is a problem. If out of nine students committing suicide in, in your institute, Eight are SCST, it means that there is a certainly a problem. You know, and there is a need to look into those problems. You cannot just say that because of the, your rigorous, so-called rigorous academic environment, these students have committed suicide. And itself, you know, forget about their caste background or class background. So many students committing suicide in three years. You need to have some programs. You need to have, you need to look deeply into your own practices, educational practices. But uh, unfortunately, in none of the cases, we could get justice till now. So in Jaspreet case, the family is still fighting the case. Uh, this is fifth year. And despite, Jaspreet was the only case 
where we got suicide note and in suicide note it was clearly mentioned you know how and what happened with him despite that this man this professor is still teaching he is still the hod of the same department and the court case is going on court case was filed under scst atrocity act but he got a bail i don't know how he could get the bail but he got the bail and he is not even you know one day he is not even suspended for a day forget about getting arrested so this is how uh, the situation is uh what more i can say you know you you guys have been you know protesting and i have been uh, uh, reading about uh, flu so i think i don't need much to say so any questions or any queries i will be very happy very glad to answer you